Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Kate Milley. I'm the Youth Board Representative for the PA Tourette Syndrome Alliance. So excited to be here with Kate Rousseau, a teen with Tourette's, who will be talking about her own experiences. Remember, there are plenty more videos coming up, so be sure to check out the schedule at patsainc.org. Remember, that's patsainc.org. Let's get started. Hi, Kate. Hi. <laughs> Um, Kate, when were you first diagnosed with Tourette's? So I was diagnosed with Tourette's syndrome when I was six years old. Um, looking back, we realized I was having tics at about three, four, but obviously we didn't know that they were tics, but officially I was diagnosed the summer before first grade, so I would have been six. Yeah, that's, that's on the young side, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I know people who didn't get diagnosed until they were well into their adulthood so it's Absolutely. definitely crazy yeah definitely a crazy thing that can be diagnosed really at any age absolutely did you have any specific thoughts or feelings you experienced when you were diagnosed so honestly i was just really confused because like i said i was so young and i just like didn't know what that meant i was like what does that mean um, I remember thinking, like, am I going to be able to get a job? Am I going to be able to go to normal school? Like, am I going to be able to drive a car? Like, all of these things that I thought that I would never be able to do because of my Tourette syndrome, which, looking back now, I'm like, obviously, you can do everything. It just, I remember just being really scared, too, just because I did not know what that meant. Nobody else in my family has Tourette syndrome, so I was the first and we just kind of had to figure it out from there. Absolutely, yeah. Um, and I especially think because you were diagnosed a little on the young side and so it was, it must have been very confusing at, in that regard too. So. Definitely, definitely. I was like, I don't even know what that word means. Like, I don't know how to say it. Like, I don't know. Right. It was definitely, definitely a journey. Regarding school, yeah. Um, has Tourette's impacted school and your um, social life regarding that in any positive or negative way at all? Absolutely. Absolutely. So it took me four years to get a 504 plan. They refused to give it to me because they said that my Tourette's syndrome wasn't impacting me, um, like impacting my grades, which... Of course, I would hold them in, hold all my tics in at school, and then when I would get home and have to do homework, it would. There was no way I could do the homework because I'd just be ticking twenty four seven. Of course, they didn't see that, so they didn't think that that it was an issue. Um, thankfully, my mom fought tooth and nail for me to get the five hundred four, and like I said, after four years, we finally got it. Um, there have definitely been teachers, staff principals who have been less than supportive, but you just got to be your own biggest advocate. And I promise you it will get better. I know it doesn't seem like it now, but it will eventually get better. And I think I don't know a positive side. It's definitely helped me connect with people more. And like socially, I've been able to, I think it's made me so much more empathetic and I've been able to relate to people on a different level. Absolutely. Yeah. And that positive attitude that you're talking about really shines right now. And especially, <laughs> especially, um, I can see it um, impacting your social life as well. Because if you have that positive attitude, um, it just impact, it must impact um, just your day to day life, right? Definitely, definitely. And it's definitely taken me a long time to be comfortable talking about it. And being okay with people knowing that I have Tourette's because when I was first diagnosed, I didn't want anybody to know. I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to think about it. Like I just wanted no part of it. So it's definitely taken me a long time to get where I am today to be accepting of it and be open about it. Absolutely. Um, well, going off of that, what are some, um, what do you find most helpful when your tics are at their worst? Good question. Um, so one of the things that this might be different, because I feel like I'm a little different in this sense. Mm -hmm. I hate when people ask me, like, are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? Like when I'm taking a lot, which I know that they're not doing it out of, they don't have malicious intent, intent, but sometimes I'm just like, I'm fine. Just like, give me a minute. <laughs> 
Um, so I think really just what works best for me is like pretending that it's not happening, which I know is is hard to do sometimes, but like not drawing so much attention to it because then it gets worse. So if we just like go about whatever we were doing and don't be like, oh my gosh, like what's going on? And sometimes like if they're really bad, I will lose the ability to speak. That was actually one of my very first tics. I would just like completely stop talking. And sometimes I still get that now. So just be patient with me because just give me a little bit of time and then I'll be okay. So just patience and not drawing so much attention to it, which I know can be hard, but just try your best. Yeah. Um, I feel like that's also um, why talking about ticks makes them worse as well. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Does that happen to you as well? It does. Or like when I think about them, then they happen and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's this cycle, you know? Yeah. Um, what are some other positive aspects of Tourette's? Like what has Tourette's given to you in a positive way? Got it. So I have, there's definitely been a lot of positives. I have gotten to meet some absolutely amazing people. I've gotten to do some absolutely amazing things that I would have never been able to do otherwise. I've gotten to go to uh, Washington DC and advocate for Tourette syndrome. Um, I have made lifelong friends that I still talk to to this day that I met years ago. And it's like I said earlier, it's made me so much more empathetic and made me so much more understanding and more caring because you never really know what somebody's going through. They can look fine or look healthy, but underneath the surface, they have a lot going on. So it's really just given me like an insight on people and being able to connect with them and be like, I'm here for you. I get it. Um, so yeah, it's really just, it has affected me a lot both negatively and positively, but I try to focus on the positive side. Um, so yeah, like I said, it's just been, been able, like given me the ability to do so many amazing things, meet so many amazing people and just connect with people, I think deeper than I could have if I did not have to it syndrome. Absolutely, yeah. Um, it's definitely, by the sounds of it, a community. Um, definitely. Yeah. If you could go back in time to when you were first diagnosed and what would you, what would you tell yourself then? What a great question. Um, I'd be like, you're going to be okay. That would be the first thing I'd say, it's going to be okay. I know it's really scary now and you have all these questions and thoughts and you're confused and that'll last for a little while, but you will build this amazing community of people around you. My mom always says you find your tribe. So you will eventually find your tribe of people who get it, who love you, who accept you for who you are. And I promise you, you'll live pretty much a normal life. There'll just be, you know, just a little bit of, little bit of extra movements and sounds along the way. But I promise you, it won't ruin your life. You just have to adapt a little bit, but you can yeah. do it. <laughs> That's beautiful. And I feel like a lot of newly diagnosed people with Tourette's need to hear that. Yeah, I, w I would have loved hearing that when I was when I was first diagnosed. Like I, I remember just being so scared. And like I said, just did not know what that meant for any for any aspect of my life. But looking back, I'm like, here I am and I made it through, you know? Yeah. OK, we're at the last question. Um, what are you up to today? Like any any hobbies like not not so much Tourette's related like just what's your normal life up to good so actually things have been kind of crazy um I graduate in like less than 10 days um I moved into my own apartment which is crazy I'm so excited oh my god and we're selling the house that's why I moved into the apartment because my parents are going to go up to Wisconsin so things have been kind of crazy. Um, as far as hobbies go, I love hanging out with my friends. Unfortunately, COVID has kind of put the kibosh on that, but we FaceTime and, you know. Um, 
I used to be a dancer and I still really have a big passion for dance and I used to be gymnast as well. So I really have a big passion for gymnastics as well. And yeah, just living life, trying to make it through, doing good. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's great to see that you're still going despite so many um, thoughts like that Tourette's could have limited you or yeah. um, like you said, like, will I, will I drive a car? Will I, mm-hmm. will I do these things? Um, yeah. You're still going. And that's one of the best things. Thank you. Thank you. And like I said, it definitely was a journey. It definitely took me a long time to, to realize that just because I have Tourette's, it's just this big part of my life in my life of that's this big. Like it's, it won't affect me nearly as much as I thought it would when I was first diagnosed. That's great. I really, I really love that. Thank you. Well, thank you so much for joining Kate and thank you, Kate, for in- thank you. Um, I'm Kate Millie, and I can't wait to share more awesome stories with you guys. If you could please subscribe to our YouTube channel and go to patsainc.org for more information on video scheduling and Tourette's. I, again, I can't wait to share more awesome um, videos with you and have a great week.